Have you ever become frustrated working with a large assembly when you're trying to find that one particular part or component that you're trying to make an edit or change to, only to realize that once you find that part, you select it on the wrong item and you have to go all the way back through the tree in order to find the next. If that's the case, in today's video, I have a new feature that you might be interested in. My name is Mark Dolinar. I'm an applications engineer here with Hawkridge Systems and today we're going to be talking about the breadcrumbs tool. Now, in previous releases of SolidWorks, in order to find that one part or subassembly you wanted to make an edit or change to, you'd have to manually search through the entire feature tree through folders of subassemblies in order to find that one part. Once that part was found, you would have the individual feature tree of that one particular part or component, and you can find the features you would like to make a change to. But this particular task can be extremely time consuming when you have hundreds or even thousands of individual parts and sub-assemblies throughout your design. A couple of things that you could do in order to speed this up is, for one, add your sub-assemblies or your parts into individual folders. To do this, all you'll need to do is right click on that particular part or sub-assembly and choose add to new folder and it will automatically add those as a group. Now this might be helpful, but when you get into larger and larger scale projects, having a lot of folders may not be beneficial. Another thing that could be helpful is using the search bar at the very top of the screen. I can type in the name of the given part or component that I wish to make a change to, but in some cases, such as this one, typing in a generic name leaves me with a list of a bunch of different parts and components. Though this is a little bit more concise than what we had previously, I still am forced to scroll through this entire list in order to find that one part I would like to make a change to. Instead of going through all these headaches in order to find those parts or sub-assemblies, what we're going to use is the breadcrumbs tool. Now, the breadcrumbs tool is a graphics based tool that allows us to select on either the edge, the face, or the vertex of a particular component, and SolidWorks will display the history as to how that component came into being. Now, we'll notice in here, by hovering over my particular part, I can actually choose any of the active components. In my example, I'm just going to choose this bracket. Now, for this particular bracket, I've selected on an edge, and that edge appears at the top left-hand corner of the screen under the breadcrumbs tool. Now, this breadcrumbs tool is a dynamic tool. If I choose another edge or face, this will automatically update the list with the new given selection. But in this particular example, let's take a look at this. I've selected on an edge of that particular bracket that edge was a part of this mirror for feature. And if I, as the designer, need to make a change or an edit to just that feature, I can right click on it like I normally would inside of the feature tree and find the exact same shortcut menu. Edit the feature, suppress the feature, or make any other necessary changes. But maybe that's not the feature I want to make a change to. I can continue on through the breadcrumbs feature in order to find that particular element that needs to be updated. The next tab over is going to be the solid body that that particular mirror feature is attached to. Finally, the actual part file of that particular piece. Now you'll notice on the top of the screen, we'll have all of the given mates that are being used in order to attach this part into the subassembly. If any of these mates needed to be adjusted, edited, suppressed, or deleted, once again, a simple right click would give you access to make those necessary changes. Continuing on through the breadcrumbs tool, you'll see the individual subassembly that this part has been attached to, along with the subassembly for the other subassembly, and then finally the main assembly that our particular part or component has been placed into. By utilizing this list, I no longer have to go through the feature tree in order to find those parts, 
features, assemblies, or mates that I would like to make changes to. And it makes it very fast and convenient for me to find exactly what I'm looking for. One last thing to note about the breadcrumbs tool. By default, it will appear on the top left hand corner of your screen. However, that requires you to move your mouse from one side to another. If you want the breadcrumbs tool to follow your mouse, what you can do is activate the breadcrumbs tool again by selecting on a face, an edge, or a vertex, and then click on the D key. By doing this, the breadcrumbs tool will automatically be placed wherever your cursor is, giving you quick and easy access in order to make those desired changes. Now that you know about the breadcrumbs tool, your design process will be sped up just that much more because you don't have to deal with searching through the feature tree. I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and please make sure to like and subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel for more educational content such as this.